Alright, so we are ready for the run jog. this morning. Father, we just, as we gather here this morning, Lord, to celebrate the life of uh, Brother Bill Wamsons, I just pray, Lord, that you would bring comfort, peace, and even joy, Lord, to the hearts of those who are gathered here this morning, knowing that uh, Brother Bill is uh, in your presence, even now, Lord, and also knowing that Brother Bill is rejoicing himself, Lord, to be with you today. Lord, I just thank you, Father, for his life life that you gave him, a life well lived. The example he gave to us, Lord, showing us how you can exude the love of God in every season of life and how the love of God can be the hallmark of ministry. I want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you did through Brother Bill's life, for, uh, for the multitudes of people that were impacted by his ministry, for all the souls, Lord, that were saved and the lives that were transformed. So as we gather here this morning, Lord, and consider the passing of Brother Bill, just pray, Lord, that we would rejoice in his life. But even more than that, Lord, that we might rejoice in you and that we would just give you glory and honor, Lord, for all that you did in him and through him. And Lord, I pray that uh, you might comfort us, Lord, with the blessed hope of resurrection and life eternal. I pray, Father, that you might bless this service we ask in Christ's name. William Richard Wamscons passed away on Sunday, October 18th, 2020, in Cedar Park, Texas. William Richard Wamscons, 85, was born on July 4th, 1935, in Fall River, Kansas, to George and Eleanor Wamscons. He was born on a farm and lived there throughout his childhood. <coughs> At the age of five years old, William Richard received Christ as his personal savior and this would change his, the course of his life forever. In 1941, he surrendered to preach the gospel and was ordained at the age of 16 with his father, who had also surrendered to the ministry. At the age of 18, Brother Bill, as he was now called, started working at the Wichita Baptist Tabernacle with an intern, and that's where he met his first love, Norma Luella Smith. A year later, they were married. At the same time, Brother Bill accepted his first pastor at the Bible Baptist Church in Eureka, Kansas. The majority of his ministry was spent pastoring two churches. Brother Bill pastored the Bible Baptist Church in Dodge City, Kansas for 22 years. He then pastored the West Side Baptist Church in Bremerton, Washington for 20 years. In 1994, after being married for 38 years, the love of his wife, wife Norma, died and went to heaven while he was pastoring in Bremerton. Brother Bill met Sharon Bates, the widow of a pastor friend, and they fell in love and married in 1995. Brother Bill always said Sharon was his second blessing. They ministered in Bremerton for more than seven years after they were married. After Brother Bill retired from the ministry at the age of 67, he continued to do evangelism for the next decade. Sharon and Brother Bill were married for almost 22 years when she died on December 11, 2016. Brother Bill spent the last four years of his life living in Texas with his daughter, Becky Lewis, where he attended Heritage Baptist Church in Georgetown, Texas. He loved spending three hours a day praying for everyone on his very prayer list. Brother Bill also just finished writing his first book, and he was hoping it would be a blessing to all his friends and family. Richard William Wellstones was survived by his six children, Rebecca Lewis of Leander, Texas, Bonnie Laviel and her husband Bill of Garland, Texas, Brenda Rabe and her husband Mark of Fate, Texas, Bill Wamsdorf.
Wamsconza Rolat, Texas. Beth Wamsconza Rolat, Texas. And Betty Beth Van Amber must be Edward of Rolat, Texas. He was also survived by stepson Brian Bates and his wife Leslie of Forest, Colorado, and Sherman Bates of Airway Heights, Washington. Brother Bill has 21 grandchildren and 49 great grandchildren, as well as many nieces and nephews. I just saw, I guess, knowing Brother Bill Walms kind of as closely as I did, that we just had a flyover. <laughs> Walmston means goose. <laughs> so, so I'm sure he was honored about that. <laughs> First of all, let me say this. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. It's windy, but man, I've grew up in this area for 13 years. And so we're having a phenomenal day as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure the caretakers are saying amen to that as well. But let me share you something. I'm going to steal, for lack of a better word, I'm sure he doesn't have a copyright on it, but Keith Bates wrote a tremendous, tremendous illustration that, I, that, I, that I'm envious of because I wish I could, when I think about it, they just fit some. So let me just share this with you just to bring warmness to your heart in memory of it. Brother Bill, affectionately called Brother Bill Wamscon. Uh, and this is what gave, <laughs> the first one. If there's a chronological order, this would be it. Never pass an ice cream shop. <laughs> Stop and have a cone. <laughs> Brother Bill had radar long before radar was even put in the vehicle because he knew it was where the closest Dairy Queen was. <laughs> Bill would stopped and get an, to get an ice cream. And I mean, I tell you what, he just sends it out. Love and be faithful to your wife. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou givest, as the Lord says. And uh, napkins, and this is the truth. I've seen this place. Napkins in the back of receipts are great places to prepare sermons. Make your children sing together. Hello. Good. It knits their hearts together their whole life long. Don't send your kids to Sunday school. Sunday school. Get out of bed and <laughs> I love that one. I can still remember that. Yeah, that was a good one. Never keep what you can give away. If you enter my home, you are no longer homeless or alone in the world. You have family now. I like that. Keep a sweet spirit, especially to those unkind to you. And he can do that very well. Always speak well of others in their presence and their absence. Uh, Kids are better than adults. <laughs> I mean, we agree. <laughs> and that's the truth. He just seemed to be in hog heaven with a, with a junior church kind of a atmosphere. And then he'd be like a square peg in a round hole with anybody older. You know? <laughs> but that was him. Uh, there are no regrets when you live a holy life. Amen to that. Eat what you want. Just don't forget to take your insulin afterwards. <laughs> Your children are a blessing, and grandkids are even better. I can echo that. Laugh at yourself whenever possible. That's good. That's good. Honor your parents and their memory. And I like this one. Finish strong. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Finish strong. A life lived for God is a life of untold blessings. So I think it would be appropriate in lieu of if there was a petition that he would have regarding his passing and now that we know he's in glory is to share some scripture with you and let me take it and share with you from the book of Acts chapter 20 and uh, 24 in fact I won't even turn there I might look a couple other scriptures but I won't turn there but, because the just of, ver of verse 24 he speaks of the that he took uh, all the things that apostle Paul went through they were, they were irrelevant, if you will. And I'm paraphrasing because I'm not looking at the verse. They were irrelevant that I, he said, that I might finish my course with joy. How many would believe that Brother Wilms, William Wamscon finished his course with joy? Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. And then one of my favorite verses is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my what? 
course. I mean, believe that Brother Bill finished his course. Amen. Believe that with all of my heart. I have, I have kept the faith. If there was a man of fidelity regarding faith, it was Brother Bill Wamscott. Unquestionably. Unquestionably. And so, what would he, if he could speak right now from glory, what would he want, to, what would he want the most in his passing? Well, I believe he'd want to be, all to be certain, to have to be at peace, to know that all of his children would be, would know the Lord as a Savior. But I think, first of all, he'd want you to understand Based upon what we witnessed, I'm thinking that the duration from the time that he was sick to the time he was taken home would have been what? Uh, Wamscon girls, how long? For the time that, about a week? I was gonna say around a week, around, that's not very long. That's not very long for preparation or anything. So I'm thinking the first thing he wants you to understand is that death is inevitable. It's just inevitable. Hebrews 9, 27 says it is appointed unto man wants to die. Death is, I believe, just between you and I, I believe with all my heart that the Lord knew the date of my birth and he knew the date of my death as well at the same time. At the same time, simultaneously. But also, not only would he want you to know that death is inevitable, but he also would want you to know, as the Guamscon girls can sure relate to, that it's unexpected. It just seemed like a week is not very long. But what many of you don't realize is the amazing testimony of his dad, Brother George Wamscott, which I was privileged to be able to know because his dad, when, I, when the Lord took Brother George Wamscott home, he had just, we had just started a radio program out of Westside Baptist Church. And Brother George Wamscott preached his first radio message was from Hebrews 9.27. And is appointed unto man once to die but after this, the judgment, he preached that message about being ready for death. He went home the same day after he finished the radio program, ate something, went to lay down, and passed away of a massive heart attack that same day. In other words, he preached his own funeral, if you will. And on that perspective, if you will, I thought, wow. And when I heard the news, it hit all of us in shock. I mean, we just couldn't believe it. We just that quick. We need to understand that death is inevitable, that death is unexpected, and if you're saved, as I speak right now, it's a joyful reception and glory. God says in Psalm 119, 165, blessed are the, uh, are his, uh, the, the sights of the Lord, are his children. Blessed are the sight of the Lord, are his children. Come on to glory. Amen? Huh? So we can, we can see that there's certainly a joyful reception. And then... Let me share that death should not ever be fearful to the saint. Amen? Death should never be fearful to the saint. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Go ahead. It's right. Shadow of death. I will fear no, for thou art what? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen? So we see that death certainly should never be fearful for the, for the saint. And God, fortunately, has provided a way for every one born to have that opportunity of that joyful reception. One of my favorite verses as far as a soul winner goes is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I believe with all my heart God wants everybody to be saved. He loves everybody. God so loved the world. So let me say this in closing. I'm hoping, I don't know all of you that what that goes. I don't know. But I'm hoping there could be a possibility of one that's with us this this uh this morning that may not be absolutely one hundred percent sure beyond a shadow of doubt for salvation. We just quickly do what Dan Simpson, as I was telling Brother John, did with me in sharing some scriptures from the from the from the book of Romans. God's word says that in Romans 3:10, there's none righteous. No, not one. No, not one. He says in Romans 3:23, for all how many all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I don't remember. Help me out here. Help me out here. Because I don't remember being born and looking up at my mama when I was born and said, My mama, when I grow up, I want to be a sinner just like you. She, what do you mean by that, Pastor? I don't know why I was why was I born in sin.
Romans 5, 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for the all of sin. So in other words, who are who are who is man's progenitor? Adam and Eve. First, first mother and father. Amen. Adam and Eve. So wherefore as by one man sin what? Came into the world, and so what? And and so death passed upon the what was the price of sin? The price of sin is death. And so death passed upon all men for that all of sin. So in other words, everybody born after Adam and Eve was born with what kind of a nature? Sin. A sinful nature. So yeah, we're sinners not because we ask to be. We're sinners because we bear the curse. But then I like what he says in Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is what? Yeah. And listen to me, that death means separation. When we die on this earth, we're separated from the living. But then there's another separation from the Lord which will be a separation of eternity into an awful place called hell. And nobody in their right mind wants to go there. But in Romans, I like the second part. I don't like dwelling on the negative. I like dwelling on the positive. And in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but... I like that B-U-T, because that's an alternative, isn't it? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, what did Jesus do that we could have that? Romans 5 8 it says but God committed his love toward us that even though we were yet sinners Christ paid for that Christ paid for it and then he says in Romans 10 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved that's no doubt for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made into salvation. And then verse 13, for whosoever, that means anyone, anybody, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Shall be saved. Anyone. God will take you just like you are. Regardless of what you've done, God will take you just like you are. You cannot work your way into heaven. There are no works of righteousness to get into heaven. God's word says Ephesians 2 8 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us. Let me ask you a question for you that have known your Bible even just a little bit. Think about something. What is the greatest evidence of the Bible that proves that the Lord Would that be a justifiable evidence? Huh? Because all he simply did, he's getting ready to pay for his dues as a thief, and he looks over and says, Lord, remember me when I go to that kingdom. And what was Jesus' response? This day thou shalt dwell with me. I think about if the Lord saved the thief on the cross, who lived a life of what? Thievery and whatever, don't tell him whatever else. What greater proof do we have that the Lord would take us just like we are? You ever wonder why Jesus took the thief? In his condition, I think it's because of the first word that he uttered out of his mouth. What was the first word he said out of his mouth? Lord. Lord. He called him what? That's a title. Is Lord a title? Lord's a title. That's an acknowledgement. He didn't say Jesus. He didn't say Jesus, son of Joseph. He didn't say carpenter, son. He said Lord. That's a title. That denotes a title of authority. Lord remembers me when I go aside. He I shall go to her. I love that. Now you can go ahead and say, Well, because you call me Lord, you didn't even say that. He just said, This day thou shalt go with me in paradise. Amen? He'll take it just like you are. Let me ask you to bow your head. Close your eyes. Now, whatever. Those that are saved, right? Those that are saved possibly have a loved one, a friend, a relationship of some kind of person.
if the Lord was to take me right now while you're speaking, Pastor Corey Wakefield, I would be with him in glory. Let's see your hands. I'm just curious. Let's see your hands. You're absolutely sure. Amen. Let's go to But there may be, there may be. If there's any doubt, it's simply acknowledge. There's no set words or dialogue. It's simply, Lord, be merciful to me, sinner, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life and forgive me for all of my sins. And Jesus would take it just like he took the thief on the cross. Pray with me. Father, thank you for this time and thank you for the privilege and the honor to be able to share your word with these. I know that's exactly what Brother Bill Wamscon would have wanted. To be certain that all of his children and friends and friends would be saved and in glory with him as I speak to you. Father, if there's one in our midst this morning that has any doubt, that doubt can be expunged from their thinking, can be erased from their thinking simply by receiving you as their personal Savior, one that paid for all of their sin debt on Calvary's tree. Simply an acknowledgement, simply, Lord, forgive me for the sinner that I am, and thank you for paying for my sin debt on Calvary's cross. Simple prayer, simple acknowledgement of that, Lord, and you would take them as they are. And I rejoice in things that are saying. <coughs> Father, I just pray that you be with them. I pray that Brother Bill Wamscon's memory will as we reminisce, I know it's going to be the difficult days are even yet ahead as we depart from here. I'm sure the thoughts will be running rampant as, as a time for necessary grieving, a time for a reminiscing. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about Becky Wamscon. she admirably took care of him. And all of them did. I, but I know there was that time. That she'll walk through her house and miss him. Be with him. Thank you. 